Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends. Let us have some a great time together. Today we are going to discuss the book which is the only book in the world that has zero mistakes. It's amazing. It's so beautiful. It's full of science. It's full of miracles. When you read the Quran, first time you cry second time you lie third time I assure you will have diarrhea and today we are going to show the Mohammedan that their book is a diarrhea of mistakes not only a book of no mistakes but before we go there I saw a video clip I like to you, you know, to watch it. It's kind of interesting. I like Turkish drama. So I decided to go Turkish today. Shall we go Turkish? Assalamu alaikum. My heart is breaking. Oh brothers and sisters, my soul is aching. Brothers and sisters, did you know that so many people are leaving Islam every day? Why would anybody leave such a beautiful religion? Why would they choose to become a sick disbeliever instead? A'udhu Billah. Brothers and sisters, 100,000 Muslims are leaving Islam every single year. Over 100,000 Muslims leave Islam every single year. I'm telling you, this is serious stuff. This is not a joke. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. Yes, we say that there are 1.6 billion Muslims in the world and Islam is growing day by day. But the standard narrative has holes. And we are not proud of that. And we're not proud of that. Apostates are everywhere. They are among us. They are even people who memorize the Quran. They are copies of the Quran. The youth are full of doubts. Our youth are full of doubts. And we tell them, doubts? What doubts, man? Doubts? What doubts, man? Have some guts, be a man. Have some guts, be a man. But nobody is answering their questions. And nobody's answering their questions. We tell them to stop questioning and to stop being emotional. And we tell them to be a Chad. Be a Chad. You can do it. I believe in you. But instead, they choose to be bad. We've seen this happen, unfortunately. We've seen this happen to a lot of people. If it continues like this, your child is going to become an apostate. Your, your child is going to become an apostate. Imagine your child, your child, the child that you are raising could end up with the disbelievers, with the kuffar and go to hellfire. Hellfire will want to swallow them. Hellfire will roast them. Roast them. Toast them. Toast them. Break them. Break them. Shake them. Shake them. Hellfire. Hellfire will annihilate them. And the rest of us will be watching. We'll be watching. Brothers and sisters, we must act now. We must do something about this. And what you can do is to donate to our channel so that we can do something. May Allah keep us firm. Never let us go astray. May Allah keep our children firm. If we don't take constructive steps now, this is going to become an avalanche. It is going to become an avalanche. A tsunami. A tsunami. The apostates, they are everywhere. They don't make it public, they hide it. They are leading prayers. They are leading prayers to the Muslim. They are still living the life of a religious Muslim. And they are still leading that life while simultaneously declaring their apostates. Brothers and sisters, if you feel as strongly about this as I do, then please donate to us and our cause. You can make a one-time donation or a monthly donation. Please be generous. Please give whatever you can so that we can take the responsibility and Alhamdulillah spread apostasy. Donate now. Help now. You may even receive many gifts in heaven, in paradise, in Jannah. You can get a house next to me or next to some other very good looking man. <laughs> you have an opportunity right now on this Haram New Year. You can do something halal and donate your money to us. So what are you waiting for? Donate now. Leave it to Sheikh Abudi. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> So you will notice that all this drama that Muhammad and they do is just to ask the Muslim to donate now. And that's it. If you donate now, that's it. The problem is solved. Okay. That just <laughs> so uh, Mimi Hijabi have a funny debate with uh, David Wood. Two hours after, I mean, the people, everybody asleep. I mean, 
those people did not sleep right away two hours after they make a video brothers and sisters 100,000 people leave in Islam we have to do something please donate for us we are going to stop it we are the only one yeah, they, uh, Dr. Bean and then uh, we find the one who can stop it is the one who make it horrible you know anything that is in the creation cannot be God we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation how that happens how, how it happens I have no idea how it happens you have no idea anything <laughs> but this is the same donkey he said anything that is in the creation cannot be God anything that is in the creation cannot be God we believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation how that happens how, how it happens I have no idea how it happens you have no idea anything <laughs> <laughs> brothers and sisters we are the one who can save you donate now Oh, if you support Christian Prince, I can make you. I can make you a good apostate. <laughs> the fastest debate ever. Anyone can be. In, anyone can be inside his creation. Cannot be God. Two minutes after, <laughs> Allah is inside his creation. How? I don't know. <laughs> I will tell you how it's very easy <laughs> he inserted himself man what's wrong with you to be inside you have to insert yourself I'm not going to give you details how what the word insert mean I'm sure you know what insert mean like you insert all the donation in your pocket oh boy and you claim that you are and by the way maybe you can go to Turkey and do some surgery give you some hormones so you can have a voice of a man finally and I'm sick of your voice. You're sick, like you know. His voice is like a like a rabbit. Have you ever heard of a rabbit screaming? Anyone heard of a rabbit? Once I was in the, in, in my backyard, and there's little rabbit. He keep jumping, jumping, jumping. Very little, tiny, you know, like baby one. And then he stopped in front of my feet. So I grab him, just you know, like you know, for fun. And and this rabbit starts screaming, like a girl. That is Lily Dawa. Anyway. Today our topic is about the Quran, if the Quran has mistakes or not. My Skype is open, my challenge is open, anyone, he's a Muslim, he have a sheikh, he dare to call us, feel free. And by the way, the link for Lili Dawa, refuting Lili Dawa, is in the, uh, in the message in the beginning, you see it. Uh, it says share around in TikTok, etc. Somebody says, TikTok, sir, is banned in many countries now. My friend, you are so smart. I said share around in TikTok. So if you cannot share around, obviously you're banned, right? You cannot, okay, but don't do it yourself. But there is still Facebook, there's Twitter, there's many things. Let everybody laugh at those people who they can refute us. And now we know why they don't dare to call us. Now, who is a Mohammedan is willing to call us and show us why you claim that the Quran has no mistakes? I found uh, this uh, in uh, Korah here it says why are there no mistake in the Quran although the Prophet Muhammad was illiterate that is something I cannot answer I mean that's amazing but Muslims were able to answer that and the answer here <laughs> Because Muhammad, peace be upon him, did not write the Quran. It was memorized, verbal recitation over the period of 23 years. <laughs> the miracle here. <laughs> we got the miracle. Read carefully, read carefully. Okay. The miracle here to me, at least, is how one can structure such a large volume of information to make it flow like a poetry. And it still make a perfect sense when written down. Hmm. There's a very famous statement between Muslim sheikhs 
We agree about not to agree what the verse meaning. And this is an example. <laughs> I, I, would, I would request the followers, especially the followers of uh, Sheikh Imran Hussein, uh, to please watch this clip that will be shown now, inshallah. This clip is approximately four minutes long and the reason the entire clip will be shown so nobody can accuse uh, me of this don't worry don't worry nobody will accuse you i mean look at your beard man your beard alone is a certificate you know and look how many books behind you you cannot read them that's amazing so the quran is so clear and the quran amazing blah 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 but the muslims until now they cannot even find a solution for even words in the quran because this book is so stupid. So this guy, he don't agree with the sheikh. The other sheikh don't agree with the other sheikh. However, the other sheikh, he don't agree with the other other sheikh. And the other other sheikh, he don't agree with the first sheikh. But the second sheikh don't agree with the third one. The third one, he refuted the fourth one. The fourth one, he said, no way. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to refute the one who will come after me and that the one come before me. And this is why Islam is so stable. To the point, Allah knows best what he meant by what he said. Hmm. Do we have any Muhammadan can tell us what's going on? Why Muslims keep refuting Muslims? You know, the Quran says we made this book clear. Fussilat ayatahu. Fussilat ay and the funny thing, the Muslim, by the way, they say to you it's made like a poetry. This is the worst poetry ever. وَاسْأَلَهُمْ عَنِ الْكَرِيَّةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَادِرَةِ الْبَحْرِ إِذْ يَعَدُّونَ فِي السَّبْتِ إِذْ تَأْتِي so, so the Muslim, because it's silly, stupid, so they start, you know, to make it like a, a melody. So it will sound better from something stupid. But what is the poetry here? What, what the heck is this? You know what? I have a challenge to the Muhammadan. How come a person who convert to Islam, he cannot recite the Quran by heart? How come only, you can do it only if they force you when you are a child to keep repeating, 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 until you memorize it? As long as it's amazing, anyone can recite it. Well, here we go. Can Ali Dawa recite the Quran for us? No, because simply his family, they did not force him when he was a kid. To recite the Quran. Can we me me hijab? I I will make a challenge opportunity. Challenge opportunity. You know. If those people dare even to say they that they can recite the Quran, you know the funny is they ask uh, Apostate Prophet, can you recite for us this verse? Apostate Prophet, he says, why why I will recite it? Why they start laughing at him? Supposing you now they prove that he is not a Muslim. He was not a Muslim, but all of you do not know how to recite it. And most of you do not know even Arabic. And even the one who recited don't even know Arabic. You just memorize. But the second we start reading this book, we die laughing. And here is the challenge. I am live on air. If you are a Muhammadan, you have the claim or you can Choose for us a chapter. You know what? Any chapter of your choice. Look how easy the challenge is. I'm not going to ask you a question of my, you know, choice. My question is, give me just a chapter is not full of mistakes. Even the shortest chapter in the Quran is stupid. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to do so? <clears throat> Anyone, he is from the Islamic cult. You know, don't be offended if we say Islamic cult. We believe it's cult. Prove us wrong. I mean, look at this uh, this verse as an example. Uh, supposedly, Allah He ordered the Jews to not to do any work in Saturday. But those are people who they are living in the sea, and their living is based on fishing. So what Allah He did, He have a trick. He made the fish come every Saturday 
and they do ballet dance in the top of the water. La 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 la, you cannot catch me. And then Allah, He made the fish disappear totally in the rest of the week. And then when those people, they get so hungry, they cannot wait no more, they decide to fish on Saturday. And then Allah, He decided to punish them and He made them pigs and monkeys. Now, if you are a person really believe that there is somebody that fishing on Saturday and your God made him a pig and a monkey, please let me know. Text me immediately in Skype. So we can discuss it if you want. Or we can discuss something else if you want. You know, this is a religion. It's not, not full of fairy tales and stupid stories. It's just beyond stupidity. You know, this God, he is going to punish you if you work on Saturday by making you a pig and a monkey uh, for fishing on Saturday. But if you rape women, eh, it's okay. You know, eh. If you have sex with children, it's okay. No problem, no problem. Don't just don't do fishing on Saturday. If a Jew, uh, he kill his neighbor, uh, a steal, uh, it's okay, it's okay. Habibi, Habibi, it's okay. Just don't do fishing on Saturday. But the second you do fishing on Saturday, you go fishing, you, you, as a human, you come back as a monkey. You know, we struggle with the atheists. They want to bring Darwinism on us. But we strug struggle with the Muslims in the same thing, but the opposite direction. There are stupid atheists. They try to prove to us that their grandfather was used to be a monkey. The Muslim, they try to prove to us that monkeys are Jews who did fishing on Saturday. And even some of them, they are pigs. And Muhammad is so confused to the point he think even rats, even lizard. But remember, Muhammadan and Muhammad is a person who is illiterate and he did not bring any story fit with the illiteracy of a man. This is not a story of illiterate, obviously. This is a story of someone is so knowledgeable, scientifically accurate, his logic is beyond, beyond the beyond. His wisdom is not dumb, even though it's called wisdom. His prophecies, they did not come true, which is Muslim, they say, not true. His Arabic is so horrible, which Muslim, they say, it's amazing. I mean, everything you ask the Muslims about their prophet, they say this man is amazing. But how come I don't see him amazing as they do? So if you are a Mohammedan, text me in Skype, and I will be happy, my friend, to have you with us, to join us. And maybe you can, uh, you know, prove us wrong. This is your opportunity, and I will be happy to hear you. Anyone? Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Why we have only 640 people? What is everybody? Are we here in the wrong time? Are we? The one that threw Muhammad and he said, big eater. I don't know, my friend. For me, I prefer to eat a pig, but not to eat and drink the piss of the Prophet. Have you ever heard of any religion? The followers of a man, they claim that he is just a servant of Allah. Yet they fight over his piss and his spat and his boogers. So, it's very funny that you are saying pigs eater. However, what if you call me and I will show you that you Muslims eat pigs too? From the Quran. Is that fair, people? Because either pigs is bad, we cannot eat, or they are good, we can eat. But you cannot say it's bad, which we can eat. And this is what the stupid Quran said. The Quran said, 
You can eat pigs. Do you want to challenge me, the true Muhammadan? And by the way, I like your name, the one true Muhammadan. Maybe you are the only one left. Is that why you call yourself the one? So, if you are brave enough, text me in Skype and I will, you know, show you immediately that you can eat pigs. Actually, the Quran says it clearly, you can eat the food of the people of the book. The Quran say it clearly. You can eat whatever the Christians and the Jews eat. <laughs> Do the Muhammadan even in you their book? Hmm? <laughs> Isn't it your stupid Quran says, Uhillu lakum. أهل الكتاب. Huh? Huh? Idiot. So if we Christians, our book is lawful, make it our food lawful for you. So how you say you cannot eat pork? Isn't this a your stupid law? On this day, all things that are clean have been made lawful for you. By the way, this is false translation. In Arabic, it says, the tasty thing. There's nothing to do with the clean. Let us change the translator just to show you how they lie in translation. This is Ahmed what? I can't see the name. Ahmed Ali. Ahmed Ali. Let us see another idiot. Tayyibat became clean. Aha. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, Big Tal. All good things this day. All good things. This guy, Tayyibat, became good things now. Okay. <laughs> Made lawful for you. And the food of those who receive the scriptures is lawful for you. Those are us, the Christians. Was your prophet stupid or what? Hmm? For how many years Muhammad was eating the food from the hands of the wife he kidnapped her from her husband, the Jewish woman. And later, according to Muslim, she converted to Islam, but she was not a Muslim in the beginning. Hmm? The food made by Khadija was lawful or not? Especially when she put wine to her father and uncles and the family and she made everybody drunk. So she can fool her father, made him believe that he married her to Muhammad. Do we have any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Pagan contains these, so pigs contain disease. So is Muslims. So is Muhammad. Do you want me to show you that Muhammad was full of diseases? And he died in the last few years of his life. He cannot even move his ass. You have to give me a reason why your prophet was so sick. I will give you three options. Because he was full of diseases. or because he was full of bacteria, or he was full of germs. Which one? Why your prophet cannot for many years move his ass, even to stand up to pray? Hmm? Here we go, your prophet is not eating pork. But he cannot move. Do you think the reason he could not move, maybe Allah punish him because he was evil man? Maybe he have a sexual disease? Like, you know, 
certain sexual disease, you lose your weight, and then you, whatever you eat, you have no, you became so skinny, you cannot go even stand, uh, you will, anything can have infection on you. So what do you think? What do you think? What is the reason? Hmm? Actually, Muhammad, there's a hadith of him. Let me see if I can find it in English. He said that when Muhammad, he gets sick, he's sick as two men. <laughs> I mean, do you see how healthy he is? When he gets sick, he's sick, the sickness of two men in the same time, which means double sickness. This is how horrible his health was. I don't know if I can find it. Let us see. Well, here we go. Al-Bukhari, I visited Allah, Apostle, while he was suffering from a high fever. That's deep. Hold on, Muhammad. Hold on, hold on. Mr. Neglaseed, you forgot? Muhammad was telling the Muslims that Neglaseed is the cure for any disease. <laughs> except death <laughs> and then we find out what Muhammad is always sick hey Muhammad how are you doing <laughs> I have a fever Muhammad what about the negla seed you are the one who told us negla seed is a remedy for every disease but Sam who's Sam that's Sam Shamoon Sam supposed in Arabic mean death I mean look how stupid your prophet he think that death is a disease Death is disease. Death is a result of a disease, maybe, but not the disease. So the necklace is the remedy of every disease. Okay, here we go. He knew the secret now, the nuclear weapon secret. So how come your prophet is always sick? And when he gets sick, his sick is twice than other men. I visited Allah Apostle while he was suffering from a high fever. I said, oh, Allah Messenger. You have a high fever he said yes <laughs> yes my son yes i have as much a fever as of two men of you <laughs> man that can cook a potato two as two men are you there hey we go your prophet is not eating pork Do we have any serious Muslim can give us something useful? As you see, and this is why, by the way, they don't dare to call me because I have all their laundry. Any topic they will go for it, we will, you know, we, we will give Muhammad a spank. It doesn't matter what they say. If there is any Muhammadan dare to call us and give us a reason to believe in Islam, I'm not going to do cherry picking, as they say. You tell me. You tell me the good reason to believe in Muhammad. Hmm? Anyone? You know, maybe you can get the blessing of converting me to Islam, and then you never know. I might marry all the female in your family because I'm a Muslim now. At least I will have them in heaven. Isn't it the Quran says whatever you wish? Whatever I wish, whatever I wish. You cannot control my wish. You know when the Quran says, the word yashtahun. Do Allah, I mean, do you know the consequence of saying whatever you wish, whatever you desire? Shahwa is a lost. All those verses in the front of us is about desire, whatever you 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 desire, you know? Okay, all right. Chapter 16, let us go with the first one. And they assign into Allah daughter uh, this is about the kuffar, they are assigned to Allah, daughter, uh, you know, 
uh, and this is their own desire. So desire doesn't sound like a good thing. And here it says, but when one of them conceived or received a, 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 like a, a news of a female, his face turned darkened. <laughs> but the same stupid God Allah, he said he did the same. He claimed he was upset that they are giving him female daughter, not male sons. We will go back to the desire soon. Read with me and try not to love. Remember, in the other verse, Allah, He said that those Arab, when you tell them you have a female daughter, they get upset. They got unhappy. And He was using a, a racist term, which they, their faces get black, not darkened. Their faces get black. So those are bad people. When you tell them that you have a daughter, they get upset, but they give Allah a daughter. But look what Allah He did. Aka Muhammad. This is the chapter 53, verse number 22, and verse number 21, and verse number 20, and verse number 19. Have you then considered Allah al Uzza? Okay, between two brackets, the two idols of a pagan Arab. And Manat, the another idol of the pagan Arab. Is it for you, the male, and for him, the females? <laughs> Did you see the stupidity? In one verse, he was accusing the Arab that when you tell them that you have a female daughter, they get upset. But isn't it this is what he is doing? He is saying, What? For you, the male, for me, the female? And not only that, he said, indeed, this is a division most unfair. Have you ever heard of a God, he says such a statement? Unfair division? Allah complained? He want the male, not the female? In the same time, he claimed that they are the one who complain if they have daughters. But yet they made to Allah daughters, so we have to connect the two verses and you will see the contradiction right away. Now we go back to the word desire, yeshtahun. Hold on, because this is what we, we don't want to skip it. In the heaven 21 verse 102, it says that Muslim will have in heaven whatever they desire. Muslims. What is the consequence of such a promise? Remember, in heaven there is nothing called forbidden. Nothing. Nada. There is a debate between me and a Muslim. You can search it. And he said, Christian Prince, what you don't want to understand? There is nothing forbidden in heaven. There is no sin in heaven. I said, well, what if somebody want to sleep with you? He said, what's the problem? So what if somebody have desire to have sex with Muhammad? He said, what's the problem? <laughs> Whatever you desire, the buffet is open. Is that a promise from God? What make it more funny that Allah, he used the word desire behind everything, even behind banana and beef, sorry, and the uh, chicken barbecue. Chapter 56, as an example, verse number 21. Look at this. And the flesh of a fall, fall, follows that they desire. What the heck? Allah promising us, there's no beef, by the way, in the heaven, in case you do not know. There's no shrimp, shrimp, there's no fish. Because Allah, He told you exactly what the meal is. Bird. 
here they are using the word false I don't know what this word means to be honest with you let me change the translator I think this guy is using Google translation maybe you know as all of them they do they copy from each other yeah they are saying false is false mean birds is it correct word is is for false false mean mean birds is that the correct meaning birds because in the Arabic it says tire, which mean uh, you know, birds. Let us see another translation. Yeah, all of them they are using the word same word. Yeah, birds. Okay, so this is a correct translation then. So God is a promise in me. I will have uh, birds, you know, as I desire. Their their meat, not the birds themselves. They are cooked ready, you know, like you know. So. And then before it says, and with the fruit of any kind, from what they choose. But before it says, and boys. And here they are using the word immortal, which does not exist really, but exists in the end. It says it should be saying, uh, youth who they are immortal, not immortal youth, will wait upon them. That's not that's not true. It says they will go around them. You know the word tawaf? The Muslim, they go around the Kaaba, they do tawaf. Tawaf is to go around something. So there is very young little children who they are so white, like pearls. And those, according to Muslims, this is how they explain it, not me. They will be your servant. And how many of them? 80,000 little boy. Fall. Foul, foul, okay, foul, foul. This is like a, a football game in the Europe. <laughs> okay, good. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. So all the heaven thing is stupid, and then suddenly you find that there is in heaven there is wine, there is rivers of wine. I thought wine is bad, but as you see, in the heaven you get what you could not get in earth. So if it's not ethical to have wine in earth, why it's ethical to have wine in heaven? Let me know. If wine is bad, well, wine is bad. And what make it horrible, if you remember, there's a guy, his name, uh, uh, Nadir Ahmed. Uh, once he called me. And this guy, you know, he keep telling people, I ran away from him. You know? Christian Prince! <laughs> I don't know. All of them, their voice is very funny. I don't know why. I don't know what they eat. I think the camera you're in is doing its job. Uh. And what I want from you more after you agree that your prophet have sex with the goat. Oh, actually, he's here. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, let us call him. Hey, Nader Ahmed. How are you? Hello. Well, hello, CP. How have you been doing? After all these years, we finally meet. This is very good. I get a chance to meet you. How have you been doing? Thank you. I'm very fine. So what do you want to say to us? Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, uh, we've been having these wonderful debates on the Bible, Quran, and modern science. Mostly Quran and modern science. But and what, Quran, I have a few Quran challenges. And Quran and science? Absolutely. We've been having these discussions and debates. And I have said Christian has been running away from this debate series because he knows that the Quran is in complete harmony with modern science okay. and there's okay. 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 Give, us one. give us one give us one give us one let us not to waste time me and you so for some reason your voice is cutting well, let us, give, give me one well, give you me need one to end give me one miracle okay listen you have to why were you running away from me from this debate My people friend, said no 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 see don't who is make excuses we are here let's see who is running give me a miracle let us laugh uh, well here's what i would like to do uh christian friends i would like for us to have a public debate on this topic uh, in which... uh, Abdul, do you want to debate we are talking to me right uh, now until we have that happen give me the miracle everybody will laugh okay. at you you are you are playing like a kid you call me you claim, you claim you can debate me here we go we can do it right now why next year why next century do it right now otherwise you are just a kid wasting my time so i'm i'm, I'm listening to you please don't let us speak like a dog. Are you going to debate me right now, okay, or you will never do it? 
Well, well, first of all, I will give you, want me to give you a scientific miracle right now. I can okay. do that, mm -hmm. but I think you should first answer why you are running away from me. Well, answer that to the people. Why because the is running? I'm saying to you, let's do it right now. You said no. It's you who's running. Do no. it. Go ahead. What I... <laughs> let's do let's do 10 minutes right now no i can hear you will be one talk. it's a crossfire debate okay. everybody will hear us it's a conversation go ahead okay here's the problem if we don't have set rules with time limits right. things like that then we're it's, just gonna it's, be it's a free it's a, it's a free if it's a free boxing match show me aren't you the one who speak you speak you know you play karate and you are good at boxing do your boxing free boxing match go ahead yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Christian Prince, the Don't problem here is what I... Stop, stop making excuses. The rules go for both of us. It's a free, free, free. Say whatever you want. Do whatever you want. Go ahead. But, but I have a very good excuse. My excuse no, from running no from you excuse. is this. You are a coward. Okay, let me... You are wasting our time. Are you going to debate me or not? Okay, what what I cannot do, Christian Prince, is win a shouting match. That's now or not? Howard on the run. Okay, so we're going to talk about one scientific miracle, and then you're going to agree to debate me later on. Okay, so I, I let's do. I'm, I, I'm, I am agreeing to debate you anytime. Here we go. I'm here with you. Go ahead. Uh, CP, we need a format. We need equal time, don't and we need to share. Don't, don't call me again. You are just a kid. You don't dare even to talk to me. We need a format. What format? Be a man. You, call, you, you are the one who said you want to debate me. You, you keep saying I'm running from you. You are just a kid. You are not even equal to my shoe. You don't even know how to say your prophet name correctly. If I call you right now and I ask you to say your prophet name correctly, do you do? Do you know how to say it? You don't. And you are the one who agree your prophet have sex with the goat. What more I want from you? So either you want to do it now. Don't waste my time. I will call you one more time. Either we do debate now. Don't put rules. No rule for you. No rule for me. Speak as much as you want. Get me busted. Go ahead. Let me call you. <clears throat> hey. So That hurt my feeling. Do you accept or not? Theming. Yes, let's do a debate because I know you'll run away like a coward. So let's just do See? what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you hurt my you hurt my feeling. I like Yes, that. so we're gonna do one scientific miracle okay. that proves that the Quran is the truth and you are actually following a demon called Christ. So both the Bible and the Quran actually answers a question on the issue of alcohol. Now, what's very interesting here, there was a study done, I don't have my hmm. desktop, which is shared where I show you that study, hmm. but in this study it showed hmm. that, the, that the Quran actually, Muslim, because of the teachings of the Quran, the Muslim women are 50 times less likely to give a, a baby, uh, I'm sorry, to give birth to who has fetal alcohol syndrome. The study said you got to go to the Christians because of the influence of the Bible. So the question tonight, which Christian Prince needs to answer here, hmm. is, okay, so the book of Quran and the Bible, they gave an answer to this question of alcohol. And when we look at the Quranic answer, it is a far superior what answer. Is the, what is the Quran answer? I don't know. You're not giving me the verse from the Quran, remember. <clears throat> we'll talk about Chapter, that. Well, I'm sorry, you... Chapter what? What did you say? What chapter? Chapter five, five verse nine. What chapter? Chapter five verse nine. Chapter yeah, chapter five, five verse ninety. Chapter five verse, verse 90. ninety. Okay, tell me about it. Go ahead. Now we know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Okay, and then I'll tell you about it. But I'm following the rules because I'm. I know you. You will not run away from me, and we'll debate on this topic. So that's the agreement here. Okay, so let me go ahead and get the verse in chapter five verse ninety. Okay. It says forbidden is. Uh, alcohol, any kind of intoxicant, mm -hmm. gambling. Okay. So from study here, they pointed out that this that Muslim women are fifty times less likely to give birth to a fetal alcohol because of the teachings of the Quran. Now the question is here, which you need to answer is how is it that the Quran but, gave a but better where, response? Where, where is speaking about the, the the alcohol is bad? Where it says that? 
No, it says for you forbidden is yeah. alcohol, any kind of intoxicants. But where it and says, where it says and it's bad for that, where it says it's bad for your health in the verse you quote for me. That is bad for your health. No, it is completely forbidden for Muslims. This is clear. Okay. And from the study I, again, I, I, another, another, another. Is. I, I'm asking you a very simple question. You say that this is about health. I'm asking you, why in the verse never say anything about health? It says this is from Shaitan. That's all. Because it's from Shaitan, don't do it. Correct? Yes, this is from Shaitan, and so because, as the study concluded, it is the teachings of the Quran. Hmm. which caused Muslim women to abstain from alcohol and so the question from again is that how did how could Allah of the Quran provide a better response okay. than Jesus of the Bible on the question of alcohol? that's a question you need to answer okay. now well, okay. and so no, no, this no, no. Let, let us make it clear I'm just trying to get a full sentence from you so are you saying the Quran confirmed that alcohol is bad no matter what The Quranic position is that it is forbidden. Yes, no, it's no, forbidden. It's forbidden. I, I know it's forbidden. This is not a question. Are you saying that alcohol is bad no matter what? It's bad. It's ugly. Yes or no? No, no matter what. No, no. But I think these are irrelevant questions no, you're asking. You're running away from the, the study. This is the topic. This is the topic. I want to know if alcohol is bad or it is okay. not bad. Is it bad or not? I mean, what's wrong with you? So you are saying to me, Quran is forbidden well, alcohol. Okay, forbidden because of what? Because it's good or because it's bad? Yeah. What? You don't I, understand the question. I, so I need you to take no, some time. This is my question. This is my question. This is my question. question. This is my question, not yours. The Quran. Guys, you don't understand my question. <laughs> he just said to me, you don't understand my question. <laughs> but I am the one who's asking the question. <laughs> Forbid alcohol. Is it because it is bad or because it's good? You're saying okay, so you're saying alcohol is forbidden. I'm not saying. Is it because it's bad or good? You, why you are in trouble? Very simple question. How many times I need to repeat? Listen carefully. The Quran forbid alcohol. That's wonderful. Oh, Does the Quran forbid the alcohol because it is bad or because it's good? So the reasons why the Quran forbade. There's actually a reason in the Quran. They said there's some good. Add out the good that you don't you look at the, the answer. and why, so why the issue making, here why you are making a speech i mean the answer is very simple allah forbid alcohol because it's bad or allah forbid the alcohol because it's good which one choose one i've already given you the answer now the, the issue is i'm going to read it to you and you got to i want a clear answer is it bad or good is alcohol is bad or good See, CP, I need you to stop interrupting me. I know you're scared. Stop, I know this is the point you are not able to answer. I want and one one word. Word. Is it bad or good? You are the one who chose the topic. Everybody is my witness. And now you don't dare to answer. What's wrong with you? Okay, Allah forbid alcohol because it's bad or because it's good. CP, CP, you got to let me. Don't interrupt me. You have I'm to let me answer. Me. Okay, we're going to have an intelligent speech. making a speech. I mean, the answer is very simple. You call me, you say, according to science, proving that women, they give birth, and they have a, a, a defect in their birth. That's wonderful. That means alcohol is bad. So why you don't say it's bad? Is it bad or not? You know, the, the, the issue with the Quranic position on alcohol. <laughs> Do you know why he is not saying it's bad or good? He knew. He's talking to Christian Prince. And now he is under alarm. He knew if I say, if he said to me it's bad, there's something to come. If he says it's good, he cannot say it's good. So very simple question, he will not answer. And you will notice that the same argument, he called every single Christian and he mentioned the same thing. The same study which no one, no one can find anywhere. Uh, you know, Muslims, they make their own study, you know, it's a fiction study. 50 times better birth rate, whatever, health. And the fact Muslim women, they have the worst birth rate uh, uh, of health ever. For a very simple reason, because they marry their cousins. 
very the direct cousin sister you know they marry their sister literally so uh, you will notice in the Middle East how huge the number of those who have a birth defect for they are marrying from the same blood simply they are marrying their sister and yet the Muhammad and they come to us and they say uh, they give us numbers and they throw it at us and supposedly we are going to agree with them you know that's it scientific say it. who scientists where we don't know the scientists who study uh, 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 Muslim women only and they study only Christian women and they found that Muslim women their the birth the children they are born are very healthy I mean if there is a clear evidence of birth defect in Islam is you actually I said this is what I said to him in, the, in, in this uh, calling so anyway he spent the time he didn't want to answer because he's so terrified. You know, those Muhammad and they made an article about how to debate Christian brands. If he said to you the prophet is good, don't say yes. Don't say no, because whatever you say, he will get you busted. Don't let him trap you. Tell him what do you mean? Tell me what do you want to say? But don't say, don't give him the answer. So a Muslim called me. Okay, well, uh, Christian prince, what do you mean? Let me explain to me more. Okay, okay, okay. No, you know what? Uh, uh, okay, what do you want to say? So, have you ever? It's like playing cards, and they want you to show them their your cards before they play. They are terrified, but they don't do this with other people. They do it only with me because they knew that there is a trap behind the scene, and that's why we don't see any of them trying to call me. And this is the guy who agreed his prophet have sex with the goat. I was having a debate with him in Paltok. And then suddenly I found myself out of the program. The co-admin of Paltok, they bounced me. Three days I cannot enter Paltok. And why they bounced me? Because I gave Nadir Ahmad a hadith about his prophet having sex with the goat. And he agreed. And he says, isn't it better than smashing the head of the baby? And then the Muhammadan, they made articles about it. They said, this is stupid idiot. He agreed that the Prophet have sex with the goat. <laughs> Who is a Muhammadan? He can do better than those people. Like better than Ali Dawa. Ali Dawa refuting Ali Dawa. Can you do better? Can Allah be inside his creation, Muslims? Yes or no? <laughs> but this is the same donkey, he said. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation. How that happens? How, how it happens? I have no idea. I will tell you how it happened. He covered himself by Vaseline. I mean, the creation is so tight. He covered himself by Vaseline and he was able to go through. And look how many microphones he have in his jacket. This guy, he think he is a speaker in the, in the name of NASA. What all of this in your, you know, and why are you wearing this jacket? I mean, this guy, he think like he's an official. Look what he's wearing. Look what he have in him. Sunglasses. Uh, he's trying to copy the, the, the pimp and rotate. What the heck is this? And then it turned to be that Allah, yes, is inside his creation, but Allah cannot be inside his creation. Anyhow, it happened. You have no idea anything. <laughs> but this is the same donkey, he said. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. Anything that is in the creation cannot be God. We believe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters into his creation. How that happens? Hey Muslims, who want to help us and tell us how this happened? We have now clear evidence that Allah entered his creation. You like it, you don't like it, it's a fact. We have it documented. We have it posted. We have it listed. We have it wherever you want to have it. Any Muhammadan?
anyone, any half one, any quarter one, who is a Muhammadan would like to join us right now, right here? Trust me, my friend, you will be a winner. Allah is taking your side. The God who entered his creation. You know those Muhammadan, they keep saying to us, Allah is unlike anything, which is a verse taken from the Old Testament. God, nothing like God. But nothing like God doesn't mean that there's things we do and God has. That even is stupid, like, you know, we love. Do God love? So nothing like God have nothing to do with the way they understood. Nothing like God in his power, in his ability, in his uh, almighty. But there's many things a human being he have the same God has. Isn't it the Quran says Allah will get angry? Isn't it the Quran says Allah forget? Isn't it the Quran says Allah... Uh, 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 like he's very emotional. Isn't it the Quran say Allah have hands, Allah have a foot, Allah have a shin? Well, we have those things. So the Muhammadan, they have one verse in the Quran, they keep repeating it to everybody, nothing like Allah, but the second we examine Allah, we find Allah, He is like every one of us, actually Allah, he have the same problem of a human being. A human being who is an Arab, specifically the Arab, if they, if you tell them you have a child, she is a female, they get unhappy. Allah, he got unhappy for having female daughter. And Allah, he is saying in his own words, this division the most unfair. So what do you mean nothing like Allah? Why Allah he think that the male for him is a fair division? What what difference is going to make for Allah? Do we have any Muhammadan? Until now we have zero text from Muhammadan in Skype. All right. Anyone? Mayday, mayday, mayday. If there is any brave Muslim, mayday. Daughter are hard to raise and they are poor people, that is why. Well, my friend, in Islamic countries, daughter is a business because the husband, he have to pay the father a lot of money and then you get rich. And if she is a very pretty daughter, she get married, she make her husband hate her, he divorce her, she marry the second husband, and each time she remarry, she get paid and bring money to her father's house. We know the deal, and you know the deal. Not to forget that Muslim women, they can do muta and they can earn a lot of money from sex business. And that is mentioned in the Quran. Ujurahun, pay them their wages. Even your Islamic website make it clear that it is not forbidden to rent a women. In fact, you should rent a woman when you have a desire. Renting a woman. Renting a woman. Like you rent a car, etc., but renting a woman, literally. Do we have any Muhammadan have the courage and the knowledge to join us? Anyone? Anyone? Mayday, mayday. How do you do? Who is Muhammad? 
fan to call and do defend him anyone even I told you I will not even ask you my question you choose for me a chapter from the Quran and we go from there which mean you are the one who is going to choose what is good for you what do you think I like to know your opinion about the shroud of terrain I have no opinion for a very simple reason I never saw it I never touch it I never study it but I take what you know I mean it doesn't it doesn't hurt us it doesn't support us it might be true if it's true God is good if it's not we should not believe it but we don't believe in Jesus crucifixion because of such a thing do we we don't Do we have any Mohammedan? But as an example, there's a miracle happening every year for the last 2,000 years. Fire and light come from the empty tomb of Jesus. That is something, isn't it? And I just posted a link in Patreon today. You can go during the Orthodox Easter to Jerusalem and you can witness it yourself now for sure the Muhammad and they say to you it's a lie it's a fabrication and the atheist will say the same eh, no problem you can say whatever you want at the end of the day people believe whatever they want but this has happened every single year and there's something unique about this fire it doesn't burn you even though it's a burning fire you put it under your skin, and your skin will be fine. Even though you are not even burning the original fire, which is like a, you know a candle, you light from a candle from a candle, and uh, we have you know we don't believe in the Messiah because of this, no. But there's millions of things prove to us the Messiah who is He. So happy Easter for you know people who celebrate Easter. Do we have any Muhammadan? However, Muhammad, he tried to copy same in his religion. So Muhammad, he claimed that uh, when his mother, she gave birth to him, a light came out from her vagina and reached all the way the palaces of Damascus. So obviously, Muhammad, he tried to copy anything in Christianity. The difference is, that the light in the story of Muhammad is coming from the, mud, the, the from his mother vagina, which make it the first nuclear explosion vagina. And the funny is, nobody saw the light coming from Muhammad's mother, not even in Mecca. And you know, you can imagine that at that time, all the historian in the world, when Muhammad was born, nobody recorded anything. And at that time, the Roman, they were in Damascus and they were in Jerusalem. And nobody record that there's a light came to their palaces and that light was so strong. So imagine like we are sitting, you know, and then daytime, nighttime, doesn't matter. Light came and this light is amazing light coming from the vagina of Muhammad mother. Reaching all the way is going to be a straight beam. And by the way, that is impossible because light, they go straight, right? Light, they don't go like an arrow, you know. It's not a missile, you shoot it. Light always go in one direction, straight, very straight. So the earth is not a flat, but yet Muhammad, he claimed that the light came from his mother, reached all the way the palaces of Damascus. Yet nobody saw such a thing happening, maybe because at that time all the people were blind. Which is very normal you know like i remember i used to, i used to live in a country and a town and a city all and everybody is a blind because they are muslims so obviously this is true how blind people can see such a thing they can't see 
Do we have any Muhammadan? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Anyone? Huh? Actually, there is many videos speaking about Muhammad, how light come from his face and the description of Muhammad because he's so white. If you remember, there's a video. If you watch it, you will die laughing. Uh, the guy is like, he's so emotional because the prophet is so white you know if the prophet is so white you know when you have a prophet who is so white I mean aren't you going to cry but let us be honest you have a prophet and he's so white and you know you go in the night and the night is dark and then there's a Muslim guy he walk in the street and then he saw the prophet and then he saw the moon so Find he him to me Describe him for me, you know. Somebody said, describe him for me. Muslims, look at the description of your Rasul. And for some, this would be the first time you hear what your prophet looked like. I saw a man of striking appearance. Zahir al ablaja al-wajh, radiant face, Hassan al-khalq, beautifully created. لم تعبه السجلة his belly wasn't protruding ولم تزر به they are even describing his belly <laughs> I mean they were the radiant face then he they jumped to the belly like what the heck his belly what 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 happened to his belly that's deep nor was his head disproportionate and small wasimun qasim proportionate and delicate finely made hey muslims please disclaimer don't touch yourself i know many of you where you go so please behave yourself don't touch yourself i'm warning you you touch yourself i'm going to block you Behave yourself. He's so good looking. Uh, what more? A specimen of a creation. In his eyes, there was a contrast. The dark was immensely dark. The white was excessively white. And his eyelashes were long. His what? Eye lashes? <laughs> Prophet Muhammad. Eye lashes. We have to admit Hey Muslims, have you ever heard Christians speaking about the eyelashes of Jesus? The eyelashes of Muhammad, sorry, uh, Musa, Abraham? Have you ever heard of any religion in the world describing the belly bomb of their God or whatever? I mean, even the Buddhas, they make their Buddha look funny. Only Muhammadan. They made the specific description for the pretty Prophet Muhammad. His eyelashes, brother. You should see his eyelashes. Brother, if you see Prophet Muhammad, you will feel in love. You will hate your wife. Women these days, they put fake eyelashes. Prophet Muhammad have real eyelashes. 
By the way, he have eyelashes everywhere. He have lashes in his ass. He have lashes in his eyes. He have lashes everywhere, everywhere. I'm not going to count for you. What is mentioned, what is what is missing to mention is the description of his ass. And they keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And what the heck? This is Prophet Muhammad. Now we will get more people who they are interested in makeup to join us. Just wait when they see this uh, in the live stream. Like, what is this? Uh, that says, okay, girls, I'm going today. I'm going to teach you how to do makeup, how to make this shade, and how to can draw like your eyebrows, which looks scary, scare the hell off me. And this woman, she looked like she have those things, you know, put them in the Christmas tree in the day of Christmas. And those things on the eyes, I don't know what they are, but it sounds like an aluminium, you know? Like, you know, you brush it, you throw it, you put the glue, you put it there, you turn the fan on, they will stick in your face. And those brushes, by the way, I think they are not for beautification reason. I think it's just to clean your, like, you know, like a brush, you know, the brush, 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 brush. However, maybe she is going to do hiking and she don't want mosquitoes to touch her eyes. So the second mosquito, she tried to get it closer, she closed her eyes a little bit, but still she can see, and mosquitoes cannot get it closed. So I'm thinking about this lashes things is to lash you. You know, may Allah lash you all. What the heck is this? I mean, women, they do crazy stuff. Oh boy. Fake eyelashes, fake breast, fake ass, fake boobs, fake nipples, fake... Oh, look at this guy. This is, this is, a, this is a guy. I can't tell. Oh boy. Oh boy. Prof I just found the Prophet Muhammad. He put eye uh, I, 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 uh, he put eyeliner by the way. Prophet Muhammad, he put eyeliner. What the heck is that man? This man looks so good. We just found a picture of a Prophet Muhammad. And look at his lips is thick. Did you bite somebody? Are you a zombie or what? What happened? What the heck is that? You know, I'm not sure. Anyway, and look, they are getting longer. Like the other women, the women there, this guy, he has something. The women she have, you know, this this is what? I mean, I don't know. I, th I think he used it for a barbecue. Like, you know, in the barbecue, you need something to wave the air, the air so you can get the, you know, the, the fire go like strong. So like you, you know, you move your eyes up and down and the fire go crazy I know I know why I'm just thinking you know because there is no reason for any person to do that to himself unless it is <clears throat> you know Siko Siko oh boy what this be what this guy he doing or oh, maybe this is in the doctor oh no no this is not in the doctor I know now I know what is this you know like okay I will show you what I'm talking about you guys you have no idea what I'm talking about just let me show you okay this is you know look at this in the beginning I said to myself maybe the doctor is trying to open the eye you know no no you know this has happened to a married man like when your wife like you you know you spend the night outside and you don't want to tell her where you've been so she telling you like look me in the eye and then like your in your eye is a you know, thinking because you are maybe not going to tell the truth, you know, you know, look me in the eye, look at me. So now the women, they are purchasing a special tool to keep your eyes staring at them so they can find the truth. So she said to you now, look me at the eye and she put this thing in your eyes to keep them open so she can examine the truth, uh, you know, between your, you know, whatever, you know the thing, Joe Biden, all right? Now we go back to Muhammad. Leave the women alone before we get assassinated by some women. You know the high heels, what they can do. Any Muslim here, description of a Prophet Muhammad, he was so white. He looked at the moon, he looked at the Prophet, he looked at the moon, he looked at the Prophet, he looked at the moon, and look at the Prophet. And the guy in the video is almost crying. All of this because the Prophet, he looked so white. He looked at the moon. Oh, he came at night. Almost commanding and overtaking Ajmal and Nas Wa Abhahum Mimbaid from afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. But from a close, what will happen? From afar, he is striking. 
from a close distance what will happen to us. وأحسنهم وأجملهم من قريب. And when he came near, the best of them. I mean, he covered it from all distance. From far, he's the most striking. From a close distance, he is the most beautiful man. What is missing? Nothing is missing. Yet his penis is not working. Yet he was the most weak person between all mankind and boom boom. Yet he invoked his God Allah to send him a dish of shish kebab. He ate it, he got the power of 40 men. Yet he, uh, he, he was bewitched and he imagined himself having sex, but he cannot have sex. All this beauty is for what? And do you have a picture? How do you know? And the most handsome of them in closeness. You know what? This is what my mom, she used to say to me. For a certain time, I believed her until I saw other kids, you know? Son, you are the most handsome boy. And I was like, really? Oh, okay. I look at the mirror. It, What the heck is that? You know? But I believed her. I believed her, you know? But then I understand. You know, she is a mother. She thinks, really, I'm the most handsome boy. Yeah. Is that description happened to you? I mean, to hear from his mother or from whom? What the heck is that? <laughs> So such an exalted and sweet level of logic. Yeah, like he asked uh, his follower, did you F her? Hey, did you F her? You see how, and the hadith says, Are you, he used to beat the Muslims and curse them and, you know, like insult them. He said the F word to them. His, his word is so sweet, so sweet, so sweet. Mm. Like when he used to speak, it was so coherently logical. It was smooth and easy to understand. Faslun la nazrun wa la hazr. He was to the point, not excessive, nor too short. Exactly. Let's read the Quran. He is to the point. He is to the point. To the point. Those Muslims cannot understand what he's saying. Hussein himself says to uh, to critically critically think regarding what he's saying and how it contradicts uh, the Quran. What the heck? What? Do we have any Muhammadan here? Muhammad is always to the point. Who is a Muslim can call us and give us an example? I mean, this is the first time, by the way, I see somebody, his beard is like square. Not square, sorry. Yeah, square. How you can do this beard like this? I look at his beard, I look at my beard. I look at his beard, I look at my beard. I look at his beard, I you know, and then I say to myself, his beard is a, a Budweiser. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us? May they, may they. Why it's too dry? Why it's so dry? What happened to the brave Muslims who they are truly worshippers, who they are so proud of Allah, wisdom, the Quran, the amazing Quran? Why are those who post in Korah why the Quran have zero mistakes? It's a miracle, brother, miracle. It's a miracle. Huh. It is how one can structure such a large volume. My friend, all your Quran is not even in the size of the index of our book. Do you know the index? Seriously, all your Quran together is not the size of our index. Large book, since when the Quran is large? Size does matter. Who is a Muhammadan who can call us and show us from the large, such a structure, such what? Can a structure such a larger volume of information? Yeah, I mean, the information there is beyond any information. Who can share with us some information from the Quran? Anyone?
President Sitzer, there is a lot of proof that Prophet Muhammad is not the one who made the Quran. Zakar Naik, how in the world that happened? What is the proof you have? Christian Prince, first of all, you are a liar, and I'm going to get you busted. You don't change the topic. Give us the proof that Prophet Muhammad, he gave information which is absolutely true. Can you give us an example? Okay, I'm going to show you an example. In the Quran, in chapter 15, verse number 23, it said that the Big Bang, what the heck in the Quran it says Big Bang? Exactly. Zakir Naik, you want to bet? First of all, it's haram to bet. Secondly, I'm going to bet that it is betting it haram. Okay, what? It's haram to bet, so you want to bet that betting is haram? Exactly. But by doing that, you are betting. Christian Prince, forget it. You know, no, you just say it. You want to bet that betting is haram. But if it's haram, how you can do betting? First of all, Christian Prince, you are changing the topic. Okay, let us go back to the Big Bang. Christian Prince, the topic was not the Big Bang. It was that the prophet given through proof. Okay, but you told me the Big Bang is the proof. Exactly. So this is the topic. Christian Prince, it is not the topic. The topic is Prophet Muhammad have proof. You told me that the Big Bang is a proof. So this is the topic. Christian Prince, you are stupid and you are very slow. I'm going to get you busted. The topic is that the Prophet Muhammad have a proof. Okay, and you told me you mentioned the Big Bang is the proof. So now this is the topic. Christian Prince, I can't talk to you because they are from a very, 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 very stupid little dog. And you don't have any education. Secondly, how someone can like me, handsome, with nice beard, can speak to one like you? Do you have a beard like mine? Hey, Zakir Naik, my beard, trust me, is like a broom. You don't want to compare it to yours. But this is not the topic, man. Hey, Muslims, anyone can do better than Zakir Naik, the Big Bang in the Quran? The Big Bang is in the Quran. Are you sure? <laughs> that you have heard me talking about the Big Bang being mentioned in the Quran and Big Bang has taken place millions of years ago and it's a big process, long process but Quran says Allah has created the heaven and the earth in six days so isn't it contradicting science? Uh, just uh, a question, Zach and Nick, before you go deep in the topic, is that the Valentine Day? <laughs> I mean, this guy is a shake. The candles are red. The flowers behind him are red. Is that like, are you going to have sex after this or what? What's, what's going on? What is this around? Why? What those candles? Why are why they are red and the flowers are red? <laughs> are you sure this is not the Valentine Day? You know, <laughs> hey Zach and I, shouldn't you change your jacket? <laughs> what about you have the same color of the candles? I mean, what the heck is that, man? I love it when Muslims they speak wisdom and they do wisdom thing, and look, even the decoration is full of wisdom. Okay, go ahead. That you have heard me talking about the Big Bang being mentioned in the Quran. And Big Bang has taken place millions of years ago. And it's a big process, long process. But Quran says Allah has created the heaven and the earth in six days. So isn't it contradicting science? What the brother is referring to is the verse of the Quran. Where Allah says in the Quran, in sorry, Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. Where Allah says, they are changing the page for him <laughs> in the computer. <laughs> you know, suddenly this guy who have a good memory, he do not remember. The Quran says, yeah, mm. yeah flip, flip down. Yeah. Okay. You can tell he is looking at this and looking at the computer. Mm. By the way, he don't speak Arabic. He do not know Arabic, and he agreed. He do not know Arabic. But now he is reciting Quran in Arabic. Hmm. The heavens and the earth, do not the unbelievers see, that the heavens and the earth were joined together, and we closed them asunder. 
So this verse of the Quran is talking about the Big Bang in a nutshell, the mm. creation of the universe. Today scientists they tell us that our universe initially was a primary nebula, the one mass. Later on, there was the secondary separation, a Big Bang, which gave rise to galaxies, <coughs> which gave rise to stars, sun, moon, and the earth we live in. So this, what the scientists they tell us, it was first described approximately 47 to 50 years before, for which a couple of scientists were given the Nobel Prize in 1973 for describing the creation of the universe. This, what the scientists have discovered 47 to 50 years back, is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30, in a nutshell. That Notice, until now, he did not answer the question. The question is, how you are saying this is the Big Bang, yet the Quran says Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days. So now he is spending the time talking about things that have nothing to do with the question. Same time, uh, there's no caption. He said, the Quran, the verse saying, don't, don't the disbeliever sees that the earth and the heaven they used to be together, so which means there was earth and there was heaven, you idiot. And not only that, it says they see. So it's something they can see. So what the stupid Quran is speaking of is not the Big Bang, that now we are separated, the earth from the heaven, which is absolutely false, because we are inside the space, not outer the space. So in fact, this is a mistake in the Quran. It is not science in the Quran. Same time, Zakir Naik, always as usual, he tried to avoid the question as we see. The question is, does it say six days or not? Let us see, maybe we can find a different video. In the field of astronomy, in 1973, there were a couple of scientists who got the Nobel Prize. And these couple of scientists, they described the creation of the universe. And they called it the Big Bang. And they said that initially, our universe, it was a primary nebula. Then there was a Big Bang. It was a primary nebula. Hey Muslims, who agree that the Quran agree with this? You notice how the Muhammadan, because they knew that they have false religion, they have to attach themselves to anything to make Islam valid. Me as a Christian, I will not care for the Big Bang for a second. Why? Because if the earth and the heaven are created because of a Big Bang, that means everything Allah said in the Quran, if you are a Muslim, is false. And that's mean everything is in my Bible is false too. Because that's not what God said. So the Big Bang is a theory, it's not a science. Nobody witnessed it, nobody can prove it. And because nobody can prove it, nobody can disprove it. Very simple. It's a theory. You know, not long time ago, there was many theory coming from scientists too. And by the time they change their theory and they are against their own theory. Let's see, we have somebody trying to call me. Maybe it's a Muhammad. <clears throat> If you are a Mohammedan, you would like to join us for free, we would like to take you. Hello? Maybe it's Fakira. Hello? Fak Fakira. How are you doing, Fakira? Yeah. I mean, you're... You are silly, stupid. You know, you're changing your voice. Yeah. What a silly, stupid. If you go in the Quran, you will find how stupid when the Muslims, how, they, how stupid they look when they try to make Big Bang Islamic religion Big Bang. The Quran itself proved them to be false. And you will read all the Islamic interpretation too. 
Because the big man does not say that earth and heaven they used to be together and then we split them. That's absolutely false. Read the verse, you know, verse carefully. Let us go to the chapter of Alembia. You know, the main, uh, 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 the purpose of our channel here is to teach you how to, uh, let us say, how to read. I'm sure all of you can read English better than me. Uh, but what I mean, how to see what is behind the words, how to go in details, not just reading words. Now, I know that when you, you know, if you don't speak Arabic, Muslim, they can still get their chance to fool you by the false translation. But this is why we are here, so they cannot fool you. In the same time, we teach you how to go and examine the words. I'm going to use Islamic translation as it is. <clears throat> Read carefully with me. Are then they, <coughs> they who pent on denying the truth, not aware that the heaven and the earth were, between two brackets, once single entity. This is the Muslim translation. And then we part in them. The earth and the heaven, they were a single entity. How that can be true? And how this can be the Big Bang? Because the earth was not exist when the Big Bang happened, according to the theory. The existence of the earth, you know, like the earth is way, 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 way younger compared to the Big Bang. But what the verse is saying, that the earth and the heaven, they used to be one entity, and the heaven is what? Is an empty space, not the stars. In order to understand more, you will see it says, don't they see? The Muslim, they translate, denying the truth, not aware that the heaven, in Arabic doesn't say that, it says, don't they see? Change the translator right away, and you will see how the translation change in a you know in, in a drama dramatic way. Have not those who disbelieve known that's false translation? The word says, "Awalam yara." So, but I will go with the translation for now. So the disbeliever in the time of Muhammad they knew this. What Muhammad is mentioning to them, it's something they knew. Don't they know? that the earth and the heaven, they used to be together. So it is not something we discover today. It's something those people in the time of Muhammad, they knew what they knew. There is a legion about that, you know, uh, uh, we are in this earth and God, he guarded the earth. And if Satan or anyone tried to go out of the earth, you know, the God would show it him by fire. And the reason they come with this, let us say, theory or belief, because they see the meteor in the sky, especially in the dark desert, which is something you will see every day if you live in the desert, when after five, six o'clock, it's totally dark and there's nothing you can see. How we can prove what we are saying from the Quran? The Quran explain what is the meteor. The meteor is Allah shooting stars at the ass of shaitan if he tried to spy. <clears throat> if we go here, you will see chapter 15 as an example, not limited. Verse number 18. Expect him regarding the sky. Read carefully. Here. So Allah, he speak about the sky. 
there's a gate in the sky is open. And this is for who? Open for those who they are, the prophets, the angels. Okay? Uh, uh, in the same time, Allah, he claimed, that he can open the sky to bring rain, as an example. But then, if you will see here, go down, Allah, he adorned the sky by stars. Why? As a beautification for the holder. But this is false, because the majority of the stars in the sky we cannot see. What we see is a very little number of what is or the number of the stars. Actually, the Bible says, you know, count this number. There's nobody count the, the, the stars. And that's true because uh, there's dying stars, there's new stars. So we made the stars in the heaven to beautify it as a beautification in, for the beholder. But as you know, this is absolutely false. Our eyes cannot see all the stars. No, we cannot see any, any, anything of the stars. Actually, very few compare what is there. And then here it says, and we have guarded it, the near heaven. You will notice here between two brackets, the Muslim, they say the near heaven, but it's not in the verse, which means it's not in the Quran here. But there's other verse in the Quran where Allah, he claimed that Allah, he created the stars in the lowest heaven. Let us go there and we will be back here. <clears throat> if you go here chapter 36 uh, 37 verse number 6 it says that and there's other verses too like chapter uh, 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 41 uh, verse 12 chapter 67 verse number 5 etc but to make it clear to connect two verses together, let us see what this chapter here, chapter 67, verse number 5. And indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven. The nearest heaven is to us, not to him. The nearest heaven to us. Actually, in Arabic, it says, Adunya, the lowest, not nearest. Adunya. Uh, with lamps, and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away shaitan. Now, Zakir Naik, who speak about Big Bang and every stupid Muslim in there who claim that this is about the Big Bang, why you don't quote for us, this is as a part of the Big Bang theory, that the reason we see, uh, according to the Quran, by the way, those are not even meteor, those are stars. Those are stars. Those are not meteor. Those are masabih. Masabih mean lamps. And this is how the Quran describes stars as lamps. Very simple. Maybe if I 